Hi, this is uh, Brian, and I'm just doing another uh, lesson here for Dylan. And it's this is Math 20-1, and it's uh, Lesson 7.1 on Absolute Value. Uh, now, Absolute Value, the definition of an Absolute Value, as you can see I've written here, is uh, is the Absolute Value of A is written as, is equal to A if A is greater than or, uh, 0, or negative A if A is less than 0. Now, this is the, the general definition, which is... Um, a little complicated and the general way that I look at it, the easy way to remember is the absolute value of something is always positive. And that's what we'll be looking at. So if you can just try and remember that the absolute value, when we take the absolute value of something, the answer is always positive. Now the symbol for absolute value is two straight lines that look like this. And generally there's something written in here. Now at the beginning, as an example, if we take a look at this, if I say the absolute value of 3, of negative 3, as I told you, the absolute value of negative 3, the answer is always positive. So the answer to that would be 3. The absolute value of positive 3 is still 3. So your answer is always going to be a positive number. If we take a look at the absolute value of negative 7, you would write 7. The absolute value of 9 is still positive 9. And that's basically you know, the pretty simplified examples of taking the absolute value. And it re really refers to the, the number of units away from the positive line. But as I said, if you just take the, the simplest way of looking at it, just remember always make whatever's inside the absolute value something positive. Now looking at some... A little more complicated examples that we have here. I have the absolute value of negative 4 minus the absolute value of negative 6. And I like to work downward. So looking at each one of these in, uh, specifically, the absolute value of 4 becomes positive 4 minus the absolute value of negative 6 is positive 6. And the answer to this would be 4 minus 6, which happens to be negative 2. And once you remove these, it, it, it's sometimes a good idea just to use round brackets just so that you can follow through with the numbers. If we look at a little more of the second example here, we have 5 minus 2. And you will go into the absolute value. So you have 5, five minus 3 times now. 2 minus 7 would be the absolute value of negative 5. Doing the absolute value of negative 5, Replacing that with round brackets, the absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. So as a result, this becomes, and we're using the order of operations here, 3 minus 5 is 15, which gives me an answer of negative 10. That's your final answer, is negative 10. The third example here, which is a little more complicated, because we have different brackets and exponents. And just remember, when we work inside the absolute value, we are going to follow the order of operations here. So walk, working inside, I will do what's inside the brackets here. 5 minus 7 happens to be negative 2. Negative 2 squared happens to be... That's a negative 2 happens to be 4. plus 6, sorry about that, negative 2 times 4 happens to be negative 8, this will give me an answer of the absolute value of negative 2, which happens to be positive 2, and that would be your final answer, and really, that's all there is with the absolute values, just remember what I said, that anytime you take something inside the absolute value, this answer, whatever, is always going to be a positive number. Good luck with your homework.